Oh, good day. I'm down on the River Blackwater. Decided to come down today, first and foremost, to a spot of link leisure fishing and see if we can pick up a few decent perch on the lobworms. Got with me other baits though, I've got bread, maggots, and a few red worms as well. But first and foremost, I am going to be targeting the perch, but I like to bring a few other baits with me because I can't, you know, miss the chance to actually have a go at the chub along this particular stretch and also any of the roach that might be about. That's why I brought some of the bread with me so I can fish bread flake and such. But I'm going to be link measuring today. Just using the Drillen Ultralight mini feeder. Uh, that's nine foot length, but it has an intermediate section. So that means it's got a section that's got no eyes in it and you can just chop and change the length and change it from one foot shorter or one foot longer without having to break your rigs down, which is really nice. Just using that with my ever reliable link leisure setup. That's a low resistance quick change run ring. Nice and smooth, big bore size ring to that, large diameter. Down from there, little HLS tackle, watch HLS tackle on eBay, uh, buffer bead, and one of their anti-tangle sleeves that I've cut down by 50%, just to give me a little bit of anti-tangle properties, but at the same time, not be too obtrusive. And I'm just under the buffer bead, I've got a little uh, float stop, or rig stop as you might say, and you can just move that up and down so I can make the towel longer or shorter. Uh, the particular quiver tip I've got on today is a one ounce tip, so quite light and it accentuates the bites you're receiving. So should be able to you know, spot any bites, any little knocks, very very delicate bites, very easy. And today is quite nice, it's cloudy, uh, pretty nice conditions. The sun's trying to pop its head out, I don't think it's fully going to manage it, I hope not anyway. As uh, you know, I prefer dull conditions, especially for perch. As I say, although I'm going to be after perch first and foremost, if we can pick up a really nice one, I've got other baits with me as well for chub and roach, and just a bit of a mixed days fishing, but with my main eye being on a large billy, a large sergeant. Hello there. Morning. Morning. Always funny doing the um, <laughs> filming when you can see a passerby pass by and uh, give you a rather quizzical look as if oh, you're talking to yourself. I assure you I'm not mad. I'm not talking to myself because I'm mad. I do that plenty of the other times. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Um, so just going to be link measuring. As I say, first and foremost, after a decent sergeant. Let's see if we can pick one up. Uh, water clarity is not bad. A little bit of hazy colour to it, but it's pretty decent. And yeah, going to just rove about drop into swims, fish more or less proactive and you know opportunistic as I like to tend to do when I'm moving about and trying different swims with the link leisure in general. Well, I did want to say, um, which I did notice recently, the uh, Fishing for Memories channel has just gone over 4,000 subscribers. I think we're at around about 4,017 subscribers and I've got to say I'm absolutely shocked and immensely humbled to have made that little landmark I'm, it's not obviously a massive channel you know compared to some of the channels that are out there that have got thousands upon thousands of subscribers but yeah I, I never thought back when I started the channel in 2007 2006 when I just put up a few slideshows uh, never really filmed like I do now I never expected it to you know grow the way it has and it's all down to you chaps as much as myself uploading the videos you know your interaction you help mold the channel into what it is today you know i've got to say from a lot of the comments that i receive on a whole it's a good vibe on the channel there's no backstabbing no bitching in general thankfully um uh, there's the odd troll but not too many trolls which is um i think the sign that we built up a good rapport together and we've made it to this you know m little milestone in a good fashion as such but yeah I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone so you know give yourself a pat on the back as well because it's immensely appreciated that you guys take the time to watch my trips and that you enjoy them as well anyway it's enough of me before I get a little bit bleary eyed and a little bit emotional um, yeah I'm gonna crack on and let's see if we can wink out a few fish and see if there's a few large perker about
first blood. A little perfectly formed stripey. Hoping that some of its larger cousins or parents make an appearance today along with the chub. But yeah, perfect condition. Another little perka, very nice. Good header perch as well, all different year classes. As you can see, this is a young. <laughs> and there I was trying to show you a purchase, what's known as a Perca Escapee Artist or Perca Escapee Artist did the Houdini there, it's gone straight back into the river <laughs> but yeah there's, there's some nice little features in this swim it does produce some decent perch so I'm going to fish here for a little while longer and then gradually make my way upstream yeah, just feeding in a very frugal amount of maggots. I don't want to overfeed, plus I don't want to use too many maggots if I can help it. Uh, just fishing using maggots, lobworms. I've got a few redworms with me and I've also got bread. So I've got a little mixture of what you'd call classic bait. Good for your chub, roach, dace, perch, etc. And first and foremost today I would like a few perch which is why I've commenced and will be mainly fishing on the lobworm but you know me guys, I do like my chub so I also brought along with me some bread as well to cover any bases should I run low on worms with a perch which I'm guessing I might today I've only brought around 50 lobworms with me so I might end up having to use those as lobworm towels and heads you know, as in halves because I do think they're on the feed hopefully one of those will be a nice plump female but yeah, it's great to catch them wonderful species and in this particular river they're really really quite vivid like they are on the Loddon as well and other Thames tributaries an absolute joy to catch and we've got perfect conditions as you can probably see behind me very cloudy dull conditions ideal for most species but especially for birch very ideal you don't want it too sunny really so we've got decent water clarity a little bit of haze to the water and a nice bit of cloud cover also a nice bit of humidity, it's actually 92% humidity at the moment and that's supposed to remain fairly high throughout the day so more or less spot on conditions whether there will be a <laughs> nice chubby style table tennis bat style perch who knows but as ever it's just nice to be out and I meant what I said during the start of the video you know guys really really good of you all everyone um, to help get the Fishing for Memories channel to over 4,000 subscribers. So, thank you so much.
that was a roach, a small roach. Just slipped the hook. What you've got here, you've got a nice bend, a little break in the flow, and a nice area where there's debris, lots and lots of cover for the fish to hide under. And a natural kind of holding zone. Plenty of these youngsters, lots of these, do have to sometimes fish through them to get to the larger perch. Buzzards, lovely. <laughs> a proud dogs on this little chap. A bit of a bite mark out the back here, old scar, little dink. There you go, have a little change to bread there. Because, um, earlier I did have a roach slip the hook on lobworm, but look at that. Isn't that pristine condition? Beautiful silver, lovely fins, really perfect condition. Beautiful. There's a good stamp of these in this particular waterway.
another really nice conditioned roach. I've got all my older maggots and just bring them all with me, waste not, want not. I'm just using these up as I go. But yeah. Brought a few others as well which have been in the freezer. They were going to turn into casters so I just froze them. Use them just as a nice non-wasteful feed. Certainly looks good though doesn't it? a nice run here, very reasonable pace, kind of steady to walking pace, flow, nice weed beds, nice channels for predators to skulk in such as perch, dart out, conserve their energy and hit the minnows, gudgeon etc. Any, any of the small fry that is unsuspecting. I'm going to run the link with you through under this tree here, right under the boughs if I can, and see who's at home. Oh, hey, where are you going? Where are you going? No, you don't. <laughs> Another young perch. Greedy gobby guts. <laughs> Little young chevin. Typical kind of area forms to hide under there. I think they're a lovely condition.
perfection in miniature. Typical area for chub and perch to sit under, isn't it? But yeah, lovely condition, stripey. Hopefully find, as I said earlier, hopefully we will find one of its larger brethren. But yeah, welcome all the same. This is a good fish, a nice bird. Yes. Now that's what we was after. That is what we was after. It's an absolute conker. And I really mean that guys. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow! I'll take as well. If that's not free or over free, then I'm probably a monkey's uncle. <laughs> it's a, oh, it's a beaut. It really is a corker. How's about that? How's about that? Three pound, five ounces. What a scrap. What a scrap. Uh, this is why I like my bread and butter these days is in the tributaries and small rivers and the overlooked. What an absolute peach. As I say, three pound, five ounce. Just as I looked to see the camera was still recording, the rod tip lurched right round. And what a scrap. Look at that. What an absolute corker dorker. <laughs> what a sergeant. Well, you certainly showed me that you you got some stripes and no doubt this fish has earned them over the many years as it's avoided other predators and got larger and larger to become the warrior of the gudgeon and the warrior of the minnows. What a fish. Oh yes. And they truly are the biggest of fish and the most heartiest of scrappers. Oh yes. How wonderful, how absolutely wonderful. Look at the build to her. What a beauty. Oh yes, you slip back, but that's the trip as far as I'm concerned. Anything else could happen today would be just a bonus on top of this. This is just absolutely spectacular. And that's a venue best for me from the River Blackwater, my largest. Oh yes, get you slip back. Corking, eh? Absolutely corking. Bye-bye. 
Oh, puff of mud and she's gone. <sighs> Brilliant, really wonderful. Oh, this is quite a nice spot. A nice pacey area there. A little bit of falling trees just downstream. On the camp bank and the back eddy where the flow goes back on itself. A nice spot usually for a few perch as well. I'm bait up with a few live and dead maggots. Some on the back eddy. I'm just on the edge of the flow. That way I can fish two areas and prime two areas as well. Little dinker, lovely condition. Another little one. Um, quite enamoured with perch in general, especially on these lovely little rivers around here, and they have lovely, vibrant red fins. Posing with its dorsal. <laughs> Getting the old dog walker. I've had a couple of spots I fancy disturbed, so been moving, chopping, and changing swims a bit. On the old dogs diving in, paddling, or diving in for their tennis ball. Perfection in miniature, as I always say, they are like a chainmail clad knight of the subaquatic round table.
Lovely markings. <laughs> Lots of acorns dropping off the trees. Well, I had one earlier, it just clipped me on the back of the um, shoulder. It did actually make me jump. <laughs> Real smell of kind of jammy smell in the air that you tend to get with autumn. Um, smell of a mixture of foliage, mustiness, kind of musty smell, and also smell of blackberries or blackberries that are fermenting. It's a lovely season though. I do like autumn a lot, especially from a fishing perspective. <laughs> One, well, a few seasons back, I lost a very good perch here in this spot, and it's, it's always had that over me. This swim, it's always made me stop and fish it. And today is no exception. It'd be nice to connect with the fish that I lost in this swim about, I don't know, it must be about four seasons ago. I saw it, I would have said easily three pound perch, and um. Sadly, it slipped the hook and left me with the booby prize, which was a partly digested bullet that had been in its gullet. So obviously I've struck and hooked the fish, hooked the fish that it's eaten, and this fish that it, I was left with, the uh, bullet, it was pure white and um, rather, rather smelly. <laughs> so I was left with the booby prize and that fish looked a good fish. And ever since then, I can't walk by this swim and just leave it. I've got to give it a go. But no, I've never been able to connect with that fish. Who knows? Maybe this evening. I don't know. There's a lovely looking swim. We've got stacks of debris. Loads of areas for fish to just hold up and hide under. Especially perch as well. But whether that fish is about that I lost all those seasons ago, who knows? Just one of those things that happens on, on your fishing trips and it leaves it embedded and imprinted on your mind when you walk past the swim you say that's the swim oh, I lost a really good fishing I've got to have a go got to have a dabble <laughs> Lovely condition.
lots of schoolies. The juvenile perch. This one's certainly in no exception to the rule. It's certainly got eyes bigger than its stomach, that's for sure. <laughs> Nicely conditioned. And the, that, this one, I've just literally taken a small claw from a crayfish out of its anal passage. It was just sticking out. So, just shows you even the smaller ones will have a go at a crayfish and take it if it's the right size for them. But yeah, lovely. Absolutely beautiful. Another little stripey just as I was about to check the memory card on the camera. <laughs> the light's beginning to fade. Usually a good time, I mean it's dull conditions anyway. Plus the daylight's fading. There's going to be another chance at another decent perch. It'll be around about now. But I'm certainly not going to be greedy, not after that wonderful fish. You know, you're probably wondering why I keep going this close into this area. There's a little bit of a depression there, it drops off a little bit, but that structure right there where the tree and the um, deadfall is, where the log is, that's where I lost <laughs> that very good perch around about four seasons ago. Uh, that's why I'm drawn to that spot. There's plenty of features in the swimming generally over the other side. We've got 
undercut bank, you've got trees in the water, branches, debris, same again from here. Then you've got it just walking place on the opposite bank. Then as you come across this side, because of the way the trees in the water here and the log, you've got almost like a slack. Now what I've been doing is alternating both banks three quarters of the way across that side and also down this side, but predominantly out of the two, I've been casting more down this margin. Well, I'm all packed up. I'm taking a welcome rest on a very, very welcome bench. Certainly beats being sat on the ground and much better than being sat on brambles or stinging nettles. So just having a little rest before I head off home. It's been an absolutely pleasurable trip and it's been great to be able to share it with you guys. I really do mean it when I say thank you so much for taking the time to subscribe to my channel and take it past 4,000 subscribers. It's really, you know, brilliant and I do really mean it. Thank you so much. But it was a good day today. Nice to pick up plenty of fish. Also the juvenile fish, the perch, small perch, roach, chub. Great to see those year classes coming through for another generation of anglers to enjoy, much like myself. Because, you know, there's enough against our rivers, what with abstraction, invasive species, uh, not to mention regular pollution incidents and to see all these different year classes coming through I found that as pleasurable as catching that large auntie of a perch but yeah that was darn special a new venue best for me new black water personal best perch and what a wonderful sergeant she was but as you can see with what I was doing there was I was fishing proactive fishing opportunistic a little bit of maggots in a swim sometimes I was also breaking up a little bit of worm putting that into the swim as well not quite so much as with the worm because I am quite frugal with lobworms because they cost an arm and a leg so little one or two pieces of lobworm usually when there was only a small amount left on the hook I was putting some of that in and quite a bit of the old maggots and a few fresher ones mixed together and just fishing likely looking spots you know there's so many likely areas where there's debris, flotsam, deadfall, fallen trees, areas off the main flow where you expect predators to hold up and be able to, you know, launch themselves from to pick off any unsuspecting small fry, you know, gudgeon, dace and so forth and minnows of course. But, you know, as much as you can catch them from those spots, you should never ignore areas where it's pacey and there's debris as well because they like to get into those spots too, especially if you've got an area which has got a steady pace to it and you've got a nice weed channel along that area it can be very very productive but what I have done today I've, as much as I fish swims where I expect to pick up a big perch from where you might get that one bite and pick up a very special fish I've also fished spots that I know like the last spot which has produced good perch in the past so that was especially that one that I lost four or five seasons back which was easily over three pounds so I can't really ignore that swim I can't pass by it without having a go because you never know your luck your luck might be in the fish might be about and you might get another bite of the apple although to be honest that's not happened yet <laughs> but it's um, a nice spot and there's areas like that with a lot of juvenile perch in them that's not to say the aunties and uncles aren't far behind in those swims and it can be a case of making up the numbers fishing through the smaller fish to get to the better stamp of perch but, you know, what I'm trying to say is, as much as those special spots where you might just get the one or two larger perch, the spots where you do get juveniles in and, and a high head of them, you can find usually there's one or two very special fish lurking, usually just off the shadows as such. But that's what I've done today. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been thoroughly enjoyable and I've really, really enjoyed sharing it with you guys. So I really don't know, I'm just like, my mind's actually flipping back to catching catching that perch and yeah that's very very special um, it's one of those magic moments in fishing that's why we go um, as much as we also enjoy our fishing trips it's special to have one of those 
kind of special moments and that's one I won't be forgetting in a while, it was a cracking scrap. Uh, really, um, I've got to say, I nearly pooed my boxers when the uh, flank of the perch just come up near the side of the tree there and then it just turned and said, nope, I'm going back down, straight back down under the tree roots. That was um, hairy. It wasn't that well hooked. Um, a bit better than some of my perch have been, but not greatly hooked and had to play it quite tentatively, which I've got to admit, the um, Trillin mini feeder, the ultralight mini feeder rod, is very nice. Nice soft tip, nice smooth action, but also with reserves of power. And that's a very nice little rod. Especially good for getting into swims and areas where you can barely swing a cat. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's a very, very, as I say, soft action to the tip, but got reserves of power in the butt. It's very, very enjoyable. And also great if you're moving swims because it is an ultra light. And as the name would suggest, it is very, very light. But, um, I'm not trying to do product placement. I do hope you realize that, I'm, you know, with my channel, I'll say if something's terrible, which would barber rod customer service, um, I will say it is terrible if something's terrible, but it's a really, really nice, quality rod. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope I've not waffled on now too much for anyone's liking. Um, once again, thank you for the sub subscribing and thank you for the 4,000 subs. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please do consider taking time to click the red button below and subscribing to my channel. And if you have enjoyed the video, maybe perhaps a little thumbs up would be really appreciated guys uh, immense thank yous again and until my next video all the best to you wherever you're fishing and tight lines goodbye